So thank you. I'm happy to be presenting Advancing a Circular Economy in the Tree Fruit Industry to you today. To provide an introduction, I will talk a bit about Agriculture and Agri-Food Canada's mission of Advancing a Circular Economy. The world is facing complex challenges, including climate change, resource limitations, and food insecurity. Meeting these challenges requires new approaches on a regional, national, and global scale to reduce both resource and food loss waste at all stages of the food value chain while growing the economy. For example, over half of all food produced in Canada is lost across the food value chain, while one in seven Canadians suffer from food insecurity. As such, AAFC's 2022-2032 to Strategic Plan for Science identified advancing the circular economy by developing value-added opportunities as one of its four science missions to help us address the needs of producers, the industry, Canadians, and citizens around the globe. Advancing a circular economy represents a sustainable path forward that considers environmental, economic, and social implications. So really, what does this mean to the tree fruit industry? Well, fresh produce can be vulnerable to weather, labor, or transportation disruptions. And a prime example is Canada's sweet cherry sector, which currently relies almost exclusively on the fresh market, as 99% of Canadian sweet cherries grown are destined for the fresh market. In recent years, weather-related losses due to quality issues has resulted in nearly 20 to 60% of a cherry crop being lost as culls due to cosmetic imperfections, which translates to about $13 million fresh market loss in addition to the loss of valuable production resources, those valuable resources that went into growing the cherries. To provide resiliency, for cherry growers and a model for other vulnerable sectors, we are working to circularize the Canadian sweet cherry sector to reduce losses due to cosmetically imperfect cherry culls. And although cherry culls are cosmetically imperfect, they have nutritional value and have value outside of the fresh market. They have value as a value added processed product. And we are developing a technology that is accessible to the sector in terms of being low cost, simple and available on short notice to respond to these crop loss situations to create a value added product with potential health benefits and to provide new market opportunities. We have worked with members of the apple sector, namely BC Tree Fruits, to develop a value-added hard apple cider beverage product from waste or cull apples, apples that were just destined for landfill. This research resulted in development of a successful commercial product called Broken Ladder Hard Apple Cider with a reported sales worth of around $1.5 million. And although this next research example does not specifically involve the tree fruit sector, it includes both the horticulture and poultry sectors. Dr. Musa Diera and myself have been pioneers in advancing a circular economy through our work developing antibiotic alternatives to reduce antimicrobial resistance in poultry production using berry pomace and chicken feed. Fruit pomace has long been considered a waste of juice and wine processing, yet it is rich in bioactive compounds and we recognized its potential. This work required developing an economically viable and scalable method to process berry pomace to ensure preservation of its bioactive components, developing a pomace feed formulation for chicken diets, and assessing the impact on the chicken's immune system and antimicrobial potential. This work is an example of the necessary cross-commodity integration of a generated waste product from one agricultural system to mitigate issues in a another system. Full circularity in this case includes litter reclamation for its potential use in a primary production system, for example use as a soil amendment to remain cycling, or it can serve as a resource for development of a bioenergy source for use. Both may be valid approaches. 
And although we recognize the current linear system represents an inefficient use of resources and is unsustainable, it is a long use model. There will be challenges associated with the mission of transforming a linear sector to a circular sector. Market, economic, regulatory, policy, technological, infrastructure, social, and research barriers exist. Interventions from various levels of government and stakeholder partnerships are required, and this is part of why I'm making this presentation. The mission of achieving circularity is truly transformational and will not be achieved immediately. In order to move forward in our mission, we must look to create additional loops in our agriculture and agri-food system and work across sectors. A key aspect of transforming a linear sector to a circular sector is defining a circularized system. In a circular system, there are examples of resources such as biomass residues, manures, and nutrients that can remain within the system. But some materials such as culls, food processing waste, and biomass residues can be removed from the system to serve as a resource for value-added products such as food, energy, and chemicals for use in consumption. And full circularity may be realized if sewage or other residuals are treated as a resource for water reclamation, nutrients, and or a bioenergy source. Questions and limitations do still exist with respect to transforming a linear sector to a circular sector. Nevertheless, our efforts in sustainable production and sustainable consumption research aimed at minimizing energy use and waste is essential for our path forward to achieve circularity and ensure sustainability and resiliency. So in closing, please feel free to contact either myself or Nyama Delory to talk more about advancing a circular economy in the tree food industry. We also intend to reach out to tree food sector members for further discussion. So I'd like to thank you for your time and attention today. Thank you.